Is this an industry, and we heard our first panel talk about it, and Peter talked about it quite a bit, that you know, will look very different you know, 15, 20 years from now. How are you positioning yourselves in terms of your companies, in terms of a different vision? Thomas. Well, it depends a little bit on how you, how you look at it. Of course, what, one thing is your organization, uh, and I think you need to turn your organization. We have a large organization with a lot of people, so we, we're not necessarily the same as a lot of other uh, ship owners. We have uh, 15 to 18,000 employees. So we need to change their mindset to think forward. Then the other part is what we do on the asset side. And that's uh, much more difficult actually because we invest in these assets to last for 25 to 30 years. And technology uh, at least has proven over the last couple of years just to move quicker and quicker and quicker. And the question is if the same will actually occur on the capacity side. Where do you see some of the most promising technology? Promising? Uh, that, that's a difficult question. I, th I think propulsion is, is really where you need it. Uh, whether you can see it today or whether it's just out there as, uh, as, as say, concepts, of course, on abatement technology. If you were to use something which you could actually introduce relatively quickly, it would be on the abatement side. Okay. Cecile? Yeah, I'd say that our main focus now is sort of LNG instead of focusing on the uh, pure shipping cycles. Okay, forget we uh, have uh, new ships that sort of our focus to have a young fleet. Uh, dry bulk technology is not developing that fast, so it hasn't happened that much over the latest year. Okay. Sir, I'm not a technocrat, uh, admittedly, but uh, since you asked about long-term vision and stuff like that. But you're a visionary. I like to think so. <laughs> but uh, I think what we, we really essentially looked at is... Uh, uh, you know, for the for the company to sort of continue to do what it's doing and to remain stable, you need some level of diversification, and that's sort of a sticky point uh, with a lot of shipping proponents as to whether you need to f really single sector focus or whether you need to have uh, diversification. And I think from an investment perspective, we feel that diversification works because the different sectors don't really correlate, even though they're cyclical. Uh, so what we really tried to build is within below Seva shipping, we have these different divisions that work in tankers, which work in tri-bulk, and which work in offshore. But from a shareholder perspective, you're diversified with your eggs in different basket. But uh, in the long term, I, I agree with what Thomas was saying. You need to have a commercial setup. Shipping needs to you know, take it from, from, from a young guy. Shipping needs to become old school again. We need to get the speculators out. We need to be ship owners to the end, uh, you know, end user. And you need to prime your business model towards the need of the end user and not just uh, a financial model with, uh, with a, the huge assumed residual value. Uh, you know, that's not how shipping needs to be done. We don't need uh, just investment projects per se. We need to work on, on operations and, and better commercial uh, capabilities. Leon, your thoughts on diversification? Yeah. Definitely diversification reduces risk and enhances uh, return. But I believe in order to succeed in the future, we need to stick to some basic uh, principles like transparent corporate identity and sound corporate governance. We might be the new generation, but those values on which our success depends upon, hard work and integrity, uh, <clears throat> ethics, loyalty, altruism, these values are old, and we need uh, to be faithful to these ideals and traditions. This may be a bit of an unfair question, but since we are talking about the next generation, if there was one way that you think you will distinguish yourself from your father's generation in shipping, what do you think it will be? I would uh, try to be <clears throat> more transparent, like I said before, and uh, try to um, uh, use corporate governance and definitely uh, tap, uh, you know, alternative ways of financing ourselves. In the old days, you know, our fathers and grandfathers, when they made a fixture, uh, somebody asked them about it and they said, no, we didn't uh, do it. They were very, you know, they hold uh, their cards close to their chest. So be open about it and be very transparent. Transparency was also, of course, something that you spoke about. How do you think you will distinguish yourself? Uh, I, I, I would go to something else, actually, that I just thought that uh, one thing that uh, shipping needs is uh, more women to get involved in it. And I would just like to point out <laughs> that we have two women in this uh, round table whereas it was one before, so, I mean, that's probably a sign. <laughs> we're, we're making progress yeah. here, we're moving we're up. Okay, progress. yeah, okay. So you're talking about the idea of more women. Uh, Thomas, your thoughts on how you think you will distinguish yourself, let's say, from you know, the previous generation? Yeah. I, I think, is this working? Yeah. 
technology has uh, taken it in a way where you, in a way, become more accessible. So, so mm -hmm. as a as a leader, you become much more accessible to the wider organization than what you were in the past. Yeah. Yeah. I think also we will be more advanced on the financial side, the risk management side. We have experienced the downturns. We have experienced what counterparty risk can be. We have experienced what clearing can require from cash. So I think we would be more professional on understanding the risks and exposure in your business. You've heard it here first. The boom and bust cycles, they're over. Okay, <laughs> this is what the new generation is bringing. Cecile, yeah. 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 How do you think you will distinguish yourself, let's say, from, let's say, your father's generation? Yeah. I agree with the point of technology, especially it's very important. And um, yeah, also I think we'll see more women coming into the industry. Okay. Yeah. Sir, Connor? Well, uh, I'm a bit of an anomaly here. My father was, uh, was never in shipping. But uh, I did uh, come from a very strong uh, business family with, uh, with a bit of a private equity flavor, which was very capital gains focused because we, we tried to develop companies, build them up, take them for IPOs, or, or exit them after seven or ten years. I don't think that that is the, way, the ideal way of looking at shipping. You need to focus, uh, like Constantinon said, low leverage, strong cash flow, the ability to, to survive downturns, you have to really take that uh, long-term outlook on your business, which is a big shift for me and a big uh, steep learning curve for me uh, from going from, from, from that mode of thinking to thinking where you're actually thinking about, you know, this is, shipping is the only industry where you talk about 10-year time charters. Most marriages don't last for 10-year time charters and 10-year, 10-year, 10-year tenures. But, you know, you, you go and see somebody's face and you, you're actually signing a contract that he's going to honor for the next 10 years. I don't even know how I'm going to turn out after 10 years. So it's, it's, bit, it's been a bit of a, a transformation already in, in just three years. Leon, you want to jump in here? Yeah. Yes. Another thing uh, that's very important in the corporate hierarchy is that advancement should uh, depend on merit and not on nepotism. Uh, you know, in the Greek uh, society, a lot of times, you know, we hire people because they're cousins of cousins. Uh, and meritocracy is key in shipping, as in every industry. So I think we need to change uh, on that. 